This is Eerie Podcast. This is a four-part creepy telling of stories to different guests. But today's is about, you can't have this kind of show without having one about monsters. Of course, monsters. And being that like you've traveled a lot and worked in different places, I'm sure you've heard your fair share, or you, there's a cultural thing that you've heard about and and such. So lots. lots. I, okay. I I love the uh, the regionally specific monster stories the most. Actually, those are the most fun. Uh, do we need to introduce or anything, or do we just go straight? In? We just go straight in, but you can. Oh, say beautiful! It. No, no, let's do it. I'll I'll be the man with no name. Um, <laughs> No, Adam I Adam McGrady. Stories. I love the regional stories. Um, you know, I, I used to live in Japan, and, and nearly every town had some some weird story, just you know, urban legend or or local monster, uh, and it's really kind of fun to see how that plays out across different cultures. Yeah, I, and and so and how I got introduced to it, and I was interested in it, was the. Uh, uh, Back in like the early 80s, I think I was watching, I checked out a video at the grocery store and it was the Boggy Creek Monster mm. and it takes place in Falk, Arkansas. And I remember a family member informed me that, you know, a relative from long ago lived out in Arkansas and claimed that while he was taking a buggy and it was either a horse or a mule down a dirt road, something came out across the road well he said first the mule started bucking and giving him trouble and he said he sees this thing across the road but he, he said he knew it wasn't a bear because it got up on two legs and ran across wild <laughs> yeah i yeah i would i would want to move probably but the uh the family member told me like well you know we we don't know though he had stories but then Another family member, I guess his wife, had um, they had a cabin out somewhere in our house, and I guess she was taking the kids somewhere that night, and the guy stayed and played cards. And so she was crossing a field, this was at night, and went to go under a fence and saw this thing lying in the grass like it was sleeping. And she backed the kids up and headed back and then told all the guys at this cabin. They went out and they couldn't find it, but they saw where something big had been lying in the grass. They could oh, see the, 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 the grass was trampled down. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that piqued my interest. And then it wasn't until years later, there was another account like I'd ran into. I was interviewing somebody out at a Boy Scout ranch out in near outside of mineral wells texas and the scout ranch was really popular like the scouts always wanted to go there no i'm just i'm marveling at the way you can off the cuff uh tell the most interesting stories i mean i'm oh, awesome. i'm known for that but you're like yeah that that time i was interviewing people at a boy scout camp there was this paranormal activity and i'm like yeah just I, who hasn't had that happen to them <laughs> yeah exactly I, I figure everybody did that like in their teens and early 20s um so I was there, and I remember I talked to, there was a guy who wrote a book, his name was Pete Norman, and it's called Palapinto Campfires, and he wrote this particular story about this creature or something that people would report around the scout camp, and it was, you know, very Bigfoot-like, I think, and they, the locals thought maybe it was a gorilla that had escaped, you know, a, <laughs> Your facial facial expressions are yeah, it does, <laughs> doesn't translate to podcast. Where was this? New Mexico, Texas. Uh, the Texas gorilla. Yeah, that's that's famous. We've all heard about the Texas gorilla. Uh, no, no, please I mean, continue. <laughs> that that was the expression. That's that's what that was. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. No, no, it's as it should be the expression. <laughs> So oh. they, um, one, you know, the, the, there was never any like footprints or hardcore sightings. And a lot of people just contributed as a story to scare the kids. Um, the, um, one particular person there, when I talked to the author uh, of the book claimed that worked there, that 
he did have an encounter. They found him. He was so scared, he quit and just said he would never go back there and he'd never talk about it. And nobody knew what he saw or anything, but he that was it for him, and he wasn't going to go back. And But they contributed to that story. Interesting. So I actually got permission from the people, the residents there, to camp out on the hilltop where they claim this thing is. And I, I could took a former scout from there. who That's all he did was brag about being a scout at going to this place, which when I was there, it looked, you know, very, like, top-notch scout <laughs> kind of stuff. I was never a scout. But. What, like, desolate? Like, to survive there, you'd have to be either a Texas Boy Scout or a gorilla? Lone Star, great apes. <laughs> 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 it was, uh, it's off the Brazos River. It is out there. Like, if you're living in Fort Worth or Dallas and you're sent here for a scout camp, you are out in a remote. And this is, you know, pre, this is early 90s when I'm there. So it's pre cell phone, oh, know, yeah. all of this internet. Nothing. So, yeah, nothing. Like, pay phones. Like, if you can find a pay phone, that's the thing oh. <laughs> in this town that's about 15, 10 miles away, 15 miles from the scout ranch. So, anyhow, we spent the night, windy as can be, nothing no encounters i mean if we did it was so windy we wouldn't have known but um the so we there we checked out the area all that nothing happened with that but you know i would hear these random stories like that and the next one that i came across was um some years later there was reports around north texas um near the red river area where some creature lived under a bridge and mm. they locals claimed that it was created by a, some like satanic cult or something is how they conjured like it they up. summoned a thing and it was there trapped it's under like the a bridge goat person <laughs> you know we went from gorilla to to the goat people <laughs> No, it's pro- I mean, it's the Satanist connection. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, and there were people that are there that'll swear they saw something and they don't like talking about it half the time. Interesting. So, yeah. You know, one of the things that jumps out at me about these stories, like listening to you talk, listening to the, the person who swore he would never come back, I mean, I, I, I do think um, I'm not an expert in the paranormal, um, but because I work in hospitality, I pay attention to humans and human interactions and you know there there are places that just feel we'll call it ungood like there's nothing definable but it it just doesn't feel right uh and i'm sure that that we've all had an experience walking down a dark alley or in a situation and and you know we're all basically running monkey 2.0 and so those hairs come up that that adrenaline starts pumping and you don't know what's there but you're like it's time to get out right and so i think Well, one, I'm, I'm having two thoughts. One, I, I think sometimes these places have a resonance, particularly if you've had repeated stories. Whether or not you know it, it's in the back of your head. And then if you see something anomalous, that just triggers that, that whole response in you. Um, and so I could totally see it how, you know, uh, there was an article in Narratively recently actually about someone inadvertently creating their own myth. They, they set out to scare some people and it turned into a, a myth that is still haunting that town to this day. They still have hunting parties and things for this mythological creature. I'll send you a link to it. Um, but oh I think... Gosh. Huh? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about a prank gone awry. Um, they, and I'm not saying there are pranks. I'm just uh, like listening. You know, we're, we're talking so I'm, I'm giving you my thoughts as they come through. I can totally see how these stories, if you're, you're telling them over generations... It, it builds a resonance and you have it in the back of your head and and then you're in a remote area and that compounds it and then that that instinct kicks in and you just get freaked you know uh, and I think one of the other ones when you were uh, telling me about the goat man underneath the bridge um, I'm, I'm really struck how you know even here in the new world so many of the paranormal stories we have actually dovetail back to um, the mythologies of many of the peoples that have settled in America, whether that be, you know, the, the original peoples who were here first and their legends and stories. I know a lot of people that live in areas close to the reservations, the sightings they see are much more native based in origin or, um, you know, 
the something underneath a bridge. I mean, that's that's classic Western Europe. That's just the bold stuff. The the goat. That's the original recipe. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm no, sorry. no, 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 no. This is this is what we're doing. Yeah, we we communicate or just like kind of share our uh, thoughts and ideas. But this thing, like, I remember I went with some friends to this bridge where this thing supposedly lives under, and it was a rickety bridge off of a gravel road you know i and i don't even i couldn't even find it today if i tried but like i don't know how they knew but they did and i remember when we got there there was a group of us and i remember this one person she was hysterical and this guy was kind of like you know come on you know poking at her and such the guy that gets killed first in the horror movies <laughs> pretty much come on, yeah, you guys. Yeah, it's yeah. a joke we got a 12 pack of beer and it's gonna be a good time wear your tank top let me go down and summon the monster i'm gonna throw some beer you know that but yeah, it's, it, and I remember I actually looked under the bridge at one point, and at some point, what was so funny was you actually heard this sound off in the distance, and it was kind of this eh, 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 sound, which, and who knows, they could have like set somebody up out there, which I wouldn't want to be standing out there in the dark waiting. <laughs> in the <laughs> West the Texas queue. dark is yeah. a great start to a horror movie. <laughs> Cue the monster, but uh, it was, you know, it, it it really freaked these people out. They they you know they don't go down there, and when they do, it's usually the kids just going to check it out. You know, it's like the local legends, like you say, and people don't usually drive down those roads or go to those forbidden areas. But they, you know, the kids will always go to try to check it out. You know, so so uh, a question for you: Were you as freaked as the locals? Because I've known you for a long time, and and you have. Uh, what I think as, an, uh, as a city dweller, an almost dangerous obsession to being like, oh, they say there's a goat-headed man under a bridge, I should go should go check that shit out, like, and that's what I should do. Like, whereas most people are like, that sounds like some other people's stuff. I'm going to leave that to the crocodile hunter or some of his elk. So, I mean, obviously, there's a different bandwidth for you, but, but I'm wondering, like, was the environment, were, were you as nervous as they were or were they more nervous than you were had i been there by myself i would have been freaked out but because i had a group of people you know it's that you know when it gets us i there may be a wall of people in front of me that i can get away <laughs> they're gonna eat the first the, the come on you guys yeah, first yeah, they're gonna, gonna eat it first guy. but i i don't know it was more curiosity because you know growing up we there were never these discussions at home and there wasn't a lot of, like, today... And you grew up in Texas, didn't you? Yeah. Right? No, we didn't Rural see Texas. a lot of... Uh, at first, and then moved to the city. Okay. But we never had these conversations. These weren't things that were discussed. You know, it was not that kind of growing up. And you didn't see, you know, like today, you can find a channel and just watch this stuff all day, mm, or you can yeah. YouTube it. You didn't do that back then, or you didn't have it. You'd have to, like, buy these time books or something just to read about it you yeah know? you had the, the the analog childhood you heard it from your older sister's yep. boyfriend with the iron maiden posters yeah yeah exactly right um i don't think my brother had that but anyhow I, I, I'm, I'm just troping out <laughs> right. here okay. but anyhow um i was always curious because you would hear these and you'd meet people that were just diehard believers and they weren't young these are like older people and they're like you know i'm not gonna go back there you know, and I'm not going to tell you what I saw, but I'm not going back there. I love my family too much. You'd hear things like that. And they just this thing threaten you. <laughs> it's like, not only am I going to get you, but I'm coming after your family too. I mean, really from a storytelling sense, I mean, again, I'm, I'm not discounting the paranormal, but, you know, you're talking, if I was at the end of a rural, gra rural road in West Texas by myself, I would be nervous to begin with and if if i if the pump's been primed by local ranchers being like i don't go back there because i value the lives of my family yeah, yeah i mean that's, there's, there's something to be concerned about or said for that because these a lot of these people are not scared by a whole lot from what i you meet them you know they're they're no they're pretty you know quick to assume what a prank is or, or what have you and they they i you know i i mean i'm just going by what i think but well, and I would posit that people live on the land know what's on the land. You know what I mean? So it's not like if you took a city person out there and they were like, oh, I heard this weird clicking noise. Like, you, you got to assume that people that live in the area know what's normal and know what's not exactly. normal. Exactly. So the anomalous is just going to jump out at them. Right. So 
we would hear various stories about like when I, I had people reach out to some of the locals and they'd send it to me in a letter but like one guy driving down a road something ran behind the trees and he said it was huge and covered in hair and standing you know off this dirt road and he wouldn't go he turned around and left because it freaked him out but I didn't do anything more like this until a couple of years ago when I started attending the Hanobi Bigfoot Festival because I was filming it for them. I've yes, I've heard about the Hanobi. Yes. I am yes. thirsty actually yeah. to go. Yeah, you, you definitely have to. I can't wrap this until you're down there to interview people. I'm with it because I mean, I was there and I met. So you go there and there's a lot of people that attend this conference, and you'll have these kind of people that'll show up. Like I remember there were a couple older guys that were there. And they didn't buy a lot of the stuff they were hearing, but you could get them off on camera just outside this area, and they would start telling you, you know, like, oh, I saw something, you know, but I don't believe some of the stuff I'm hearing in there, but I saw something. And one guy, I remember he was a Vietnam vet, and he said when he came back, he would go, went on a hunting trip with his father-in-law and I, I think another family member, and he said that, you know, we grew up, and I th want to say it had to be somewhere, uh, I, th I think it was around Mena, Arkansas, I think. But he said that, or maybe northern Louisiana, but he was hunting and he said, you know, I'm headed back to camp. And he said, I come up the road and I see something, you know, off in the kind of the ditch. And it, we're, I'm right alongside a hill. And he said that this thing was, he thought it was like a, some four-legged animal or whatever so he said as I get closer it stands up <laughs> and he said it was huge he said I saw the eyes from you know here on the ground level and they went up above me you know and he said it stood up and he said then I he said he had his hunting rifle in his hand and he clicked the pulled the hammer back yeah yeah, yeah yeah so bolt. yeah and the it kind of growled and made a noise or whatever and then he said you know I didn't know what it was and I didn't want to shoot it you know and you don't know in those situations is it wise to shoot something and it's bigger than me you just make, make it mad or mm, yeah. you know witness, what's it gonna take witness Lewis and Clark when they first shot a grizzly uh, you could look that up later but yeah it's, it's a good idea to know what it is before you shoot it well not only that like you know I can't imagine having a steady hand in these situations, especially at night. So I, so he said that he fired like at the ground instead of at it, and it just rolled down the hill and was gone. And he said he went back to camp, and he said, you know, my father-in-law, he had the, he said I noticed he had the fire. Uh, it was bigger than what he usually yeah, builds. Really hot. Yeah, it was really hot. He had the flames going, and he said. I've ne he said, and it was the first time I'd seen him sit in a chair and he had his rifle across him. He's usually got it set up, you know, elsewhere. It's leaning put away, against you know, leaning against a tree. But he said it was across his lap. And he got to camp and they were just sitting there for a little while. And he asked him, he said, uh, it's like, yeah, you're, you're, he said, well, he goes, what'd you shoot at? And he said, to be honest, I don't know. And he said, well, whatever you shot at, you pissed it off because it's been stalking our camp. And he looked oh, out God. and he said he could see the silhouette of this thing out, but it was just outside the light. He said it was uh, like watching. I know. That's the don't part like where that. that's the part where I'm like, you know, this tent didn't cost that much. Let's just get in the truck and go. <laughs> because I, there's no way. And he said he sat on guard and he said it was probably just before dawn and it was gone. But it it walked the perimeter. He said it, it, he said he could watch it just going around. He said I have no idea what it was. All right, I'll I'll be honest. That one got me a little bit. You know, like I'm I'm kind of glad we're not in a, a creepier time frame of year, um, or we're doing this in a cabin lit only by fires at the moment. Um, and see, that's the thing is like, if I go by myself and I do these. I'll sit in the cabin with the lights on. I probably won't even get in the bedroom. I'll sit there with the TV and the couch, and I'm just like every noise. I'm like, what's that? What's that? What's that? Because you have a respect about you. You know, it's not, I'm not going to go there and say, well, these people are all, you know, they were huffing the propane fuels around the campfire. You know, it's like there's no way that this thing is, you know. Um, it, it, but so, and then the, recently I interviewed a guy 
and he called me. I did, I did his interview over the phone for the documentary, but he, this is somebody I'd like for us to meet. <laughs> All right. he's, he's interesting. A very nice guy, but he had a couple of stories, and one was... We're, uh, one note, I want to hear your story, but we're going to have to drop back to talk about that prior story. Cause Let's do it. There were, are you sure? Yeah, go right ahead. I mean, there, there are a lot of elements, I think, in that story that make it uh, a little bit creepier than some of the prior ones. I mean, one, you're, you're talking about who's telling the story. So you're talking about Vietnam vet, so someone who has, you know, most likely seen combat, gone into a, a situation of life or death. So one assumes a little bit more discernment. If you are prone to hunting in areas like northern Louisiana, one assumes a, a certain familiarity with nature in the rural areas. Um, you know, some of the other elements that, that particularly jump out with that one, the four-legged going to two-legged. Um, and, and, and again, because I'm a, a lover of stories, uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I sometimes look at these elements and I'm like, well, these are the things that, that really tug on the strings. And, and I feel like that whole four-legged going to super tall two-legged is particularly unpleasant to the human psyche. When you're like, oh, it might be a wolf. And now it's 13 feet tall. That's unpleasant. And, and then the rolling down the hill. Like, the whole thing is like building, the whole story is building this subtle wrongness and then and then it capstones when you have independent corroboration of the father-in-law also being spooked also saying it's hunting like in, in that that kind of element of of being trapped and keeping it at bay only with the fire uh yes yeah, so this one it really taps into the whole like primal human thing uh so that that I, I just had to point out those those elements of wrongness and that really jumped out of that story for me uh, more so than the West Texas gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Military guys too usually, you know, something that's a challenge like that. I wouldn't see it being, you know, they would for something to scare them kind of scares me in a way. You know, if it's something that's just out of the realm of natural for them and it bothered them and they knew that it was very stealthy you know and well yeah and they're and they're armed i mean you know that's that's one of those things i mean in the modern world now if you if you bagged a cryptoid what is it a cryptoid cryptid whatever. we'll go with that <laughs> well cryptid if you if you you know went out for a, a normal hunting trip and and bagged a 13 foot tall deer that walks on two legs you know you would You'd be in for a payday. You might be inclined to take a shot at that, but you know, and and that's the thing where the debate comes in because I always hear, well, how come we've never caught one, or how come there's never good photos? And there was one thing that I I heard about recently where they said that there are certain types of wildlife you just can't get a good photo of unless it's in the zoo. And I've heard this a, a couple of times, and you can actually Google it. That you can Google wildlife that's really difficult to photograph unless you have it in captivity and so that's usually because you know you have to think too a situation where you encounter something there's this processing of what it is i'm what is it that i'm really looking at right now mm. and there's probably this your mind is trying to make sense of whatever it is you're seeing and then as you process it by the time you get a camera out you're probably a little nervous <laughs> or still mm. questioning and flashlight yeah yeah or you know and it's probably getting away from you because usually wildlife if I'm assuming we categorize that as wildlife, it's getting away from you because it knows humans mm, shoot at us or, you know, yeah, yeah exactly. Better get under the bridge. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I always bring this levity to it. I think it's my way of whistling at the dark, you know? Um, well, um, but not only that, like there's that. And then I've talked to people that live in those parts that claim they know somebody that has, seen skeletal remains but they won't tell people like there's a lot of people that have sightings that won't tell people like i'd talk to people there and they'd say i've seen one but i'm not going to tell you anything about it and they didn't want to be on camera they didn't want to talk about it they said i just don't you know i they said i don't want to relive that moment so just so it's like are these people like i mean if this is a hoax and somebody's running around in a gorilla suit that dude like these have got to be crazy people that or they're in on it? I don't know. <laughs> Bruh, I'm here to tell you categorically, 
right now here live on podcast. If I'm ever going to run around in a gorilla suit and try to scare people, it is not going to be in West Texas. <laughs> you, or, or Arkansas? Or Arkansas. I mean, that seems like a real, a real bad decision. I mean, work it in the city centers, do it at the mall. Like, don't, don't. Don't run up on someone in West Texas in a gorilla suit from underneath a bridge. <laughs> that just seems that seems to be a very life shortening kind of decision. <laughs> like that's that's when keeping it real goes wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, no. Sorry. I'm just I'm I'm here to state. You see a gorilla suit in West Texas, it ain't me. <laughs> well, so with that, the other story with the guy that I spoke with on the phone, he claims that he was coming back from Branson, Missouri, mm. and our stomping grounds, and they were headed home, I guess, somewhere in northern Arkansas, and he said that while they were driving, it was him and a, he said at the time it was his girlfriend, or an acquaintance, but he said that they, immediately they see something across the road, and he pulls over, and... It went up this hill, but she saw it, and he saw it, and they didn't know what it was. And he said, you know, it was one of those where we're like, Dude, what was that? You know, do you, I mean, it was on two legs. So he wanted to go see if he could photograph or get closer to it. And she said, no, no. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, you stay here, and I'll take the truck up the hill and try to go. And, you know, he, but he really wanted to see it, and she flat out said, no, no, we, we got to get out of here. And then when he asked her now, go ahead. Just for the record, so he kicked his wife out of the car and then took the truck to go hunt this cryptid. Well, she wasn't his wife. Uh, it was a friend or an acquaintance or a girl. I, I'm not sure. But, no, they he she talked him out of it. She was pretty, you know, very, like, adamant. Like, no, we're, we're, <laughs> we're not going anywhere in the direction that that thing went. Because it went up a hill. And he said there was a dirt road that went up this hill. But he wasn't going to, you know, he wanted to go and check it out, and she didn't. But Gotta love rural Missouri. <laughs> so, he said that some years later, he was at some stream in Arkansas that you can't fish at. He said there's no fish in this creek. But he said that he goes there because it's a really nice area to get away. And he said, I'm sitting there, and he said, I hear somebody walk up behind me. And he said, I got a smile on my face as I turn, so there's nobody there. And I'm like, hello, you know, hey, you know, and and he said, all of a sudden, these rocks come flying and hit the water in front of him. And he said, I look back and he said, I saw no one. And he said, either this person had a really good throwing arm or it was something else. And then he got a little nervous because the area he's in is known for these sightings. And these people, when you talk to them, it's like they just see deer on the side of the road. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're out there. Like, he, he knew uh, uh, someone, he said, she was going to rent this house out in an area, and kind of a rural area, and the family told her, they said, well, there's a Bigfoot family that comes up in the field, usually in the evening. Like, it's a mom, a dad, and a, a, a child. Like, you see turkeys. Yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, it just you know, comes just up in this field. Watch for the Bigfoots. And Feats. she rented the place didn't think anything of it well he said she didn't last a few months he said because they'd come up to the house at night and bother her you know like at the windows and such well first off why would you want to rent some place like that by yourself <laughs> especially if you've been given that warning <laughs> I'm sorry i'm doing the facial expression again i'm just i'm picturing trying to read a book and then these giant these giant big feet just like peeking in the, the window. West Texas gorilla, <laughs> like like just outside the window. I mean, how do you even last months, man? I get one first suit outside the house. We're done here. We are done. Going back to the city. Yeah. Get myself a kebab. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I'm sorry. I know. This no, is, no. This is meant to be a terrifying podcast. I'm but, entirely but it, ruining it. But no, no, you're not. It, this is good because we're discussing it. It's not the. You know, we're not like the ooh, ah, you know, or we're we're like, what would we, what would we, do? you know, how would you react in this situation? Because I'm curious. Like, obviously, these people, in my opinion, I'm not saying they're all liars. I believe they did see something, but why are these gorilla people in 
<laughs> Texas and Arkansas and Oklahoma areas. It just it it's like what are these people seeing? I mean, what do what do you think? Adam? What's your take on? It? It's a complex question. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not putting your like and don't like. It, it's just interesting because I don't know, you know, and I. No, no, of course. I'm, I mean, you know, we're doing this live off the hip. It's it's unscripted, so I'm, I'm kind of sorting through the thoughts as it happened. I mean, admittedly, uh, as as a native of Missouri who was born in Missouri, admittedly, one of the more urban areas of Missouri. You know, if I were renting in a rural area and someone was like, you know, just so you know, the Bigfoots come out at dark. I would be inclined not to rent that. Um, not necessarily because I'm certain about Bigfoots. I'm not certain about the neighbors at this point. You know, um, much less if I then end up with something furry peering through my windows. You know, like the, the, I think you know when we're telling the story, there is there's a definite gap between the urbanite experience and the rural experience. You know, I'm not I'm not familiar with rural areas. I'm not familiar with casual identification of deer or, or, or any of that stuff. So, um, I mean, really, I think the whole thing would have had me unsettled from the start. I, I do... I, I would be curious. I don't think anybody's ever done this, but I know, like, you know, when you talk about, like, Appalachia, you're, you're talking about a, a very specific regional group of people. You're talking about Scotch-Irish and importing all of the legends from the old country which get modified and translated and passed down like this game of paranormal telephone um and you're also talking about the fact that the the rural environment tends to to uh lend itself a lot to to more self-reliance you know urbanites someone's outside the window you can call 911 you can knock on your neighbor's door you know the, the when you're talking about the pressures of living where you can't do that there's both a, a, a deeper stretch, a deeper amount of self-reliance, I think, that makes the story more scary. Because you're like, well, these aren't people easily freaked out. Um, but there's also a more insular nature that's that's coming into play. Um, you know, a, a certain recitance of, of telling the story that almost lends the story some weight. You know, if... if we were in the city, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to put it on TikTok. Look at this crazy gorilla under a bridge. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the the, the neon lights dispel the terror. Um, and, and so, like, listening to you tell the story and people are like, oh, I'm not going to tell you the story, but I will in the back. You know, like, th there's a recitance going on. But I'd be, I'd be really interested if there was ever a demographic study looking at... Um, who are seeing these things? Are they coming from one of these insular backgrounds? Are they are they coming from a, a, a cultural background that would have, you know, deeper proto-myths that would sort of lean into that sort of sighting? Um, and, and that's one of the big things, you know, like, because while you're talking, one of the thoughts that jumped out at me, and this might be pushing the, the cart too fast, but... When I hear about European stories, European paranormal stories, almost all the time they are dealing more with a supernatural element, ghosts, things of that nature. Uh, and when you hear about the American paranormal experience, most often it is a, a cryptid, an unfamiliar creature, uh, a thing that prowls around the fireplace, um, or the fire pit, I should say. <clears throat> if it's in your house, it's too late. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the gorillas are in the house. Um, <laughs> flee, you fools. Um, and, and so I'm just, I'm always looking at it from that, that somewhat sociological thing where you're talking about Europe, you know, like, say you, you take a paranormal story in England. Well, you know, that's been largely settled for, for thousands of years. The, you know, the, the whole land is worked. Even the areas that look unworked are you know, in fact, preserved by people, cultivated by people. That that whole land has been trod. It doesn't really leave a lot of room for paranormal creatures. It just leaves room for, you know, ethereal entities. But America, we have so much wild space, so much rural space, so many places that you can't or wouldn't or don't go, that it leaves a lot more space uh for for both the plausibility and the imagination to run with the idea that 
somethings out there. Anyway, I mean, these are just my thoughts. As you're well, no, I, and and I and to build on that, like I've had temporary jobs with Forest Service out west, mm. and I got to say, when you're out there doing these projects or or work, you're going out monitoring or surveying. You're out there. I mean. <clears throat> There's nothing out in those woods. I mean, and you're going mile. I mean, we're talking like miles and miles of forest. And on occasion, you'll find where there is somebody living, like private, like they actually own a home, or uh, there's a little community. But it's rare. And I mean, wildlife. They always, I always hear that they know, you know, like they deer know and bear. Yeah. Well, they they know you're in the vicinity. So. You know, it's it's on occasion you do walk up on a bear or well, but like when I worked in Yellowstone, I never saw a bear ever. People did, but I never did. So I didn't say, "Oh, well, you didn't see a bear." You know, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. a dog. No, you know, but it's but it's like counting. it's such a vast area that Region. it would be yeah, it would be so easy for a small population of something because you know you debate this over and over, but it would be I do. <laughs> no, I mean we're we're still finding uh, there. Just two weeks ago, I don't know if it was a bird or an insect or something, but they, there was, you know, an, an animal, and they were like, "Oh, this went extinct fifty years ago." And then they're like, "Oh, well, here You're it wrong. is. There, there's a whole flourishing population pocket here." You know, I mean, my bad from history. My bad. Life is weird. Um, you know, so I mean that that's the push me pull me of that because. By its nature, these stories proliferate in regions where less people go. And so, you know, you have this question. It's always in the back of your head. You're like, well, that's crazy. Nothing's out there. And you're like, but if it was out there, that's a place it could be. You know, and, yeah. and, and that's kind of the, the dramatic tension that, that pushes the question along. Sure. Well, and, I, and getting back to when we were talking oh, about yeah, the locals. No, no, no. No, just the no. This is good, but the the locals that live out in these areas, I always think of like the horror movies where they warn, you know, well, don't go go back in that field out there. There's just things, and like when you meet the locals, they'll tell you about it's stuff that's off the grid or off the map. Excuse me, you don't see you know online. Like I remember I was hearing a story from some guy. He went to some very dry county in northern Arkansas, and there was no place to buy beer. And then somebody kind of leaned in and they said come here you know and they said there's a guy up the road if you if you want he said but can't tell nobody and he said we followed this guy up and <laughs> to this old house and they went out and there was a barn and they said they went in this just run down barn that had metal buildings attached and he said they had all of these refrigerators old ass refrigerators in a line and each one you open had like all kinds of Bud Light cores you know and he said you know, you just kind of give them cash, and they—they they just... actually genius. But I'm mad I haven't bought rural property yet. Yes, but but it's kind of that. You know, well, these are our stories, and we don't want people out here. You know. Well, yeah, and that's one of the first things. You know, you're like, oh, don't go into that field. You're like, well, is there an illegal pot grow happening there? Um, interesting, very interesting. I never made that correlation. Yeah. Of of. Well, I just I noticed that when you're down there and visiting these people, like you and I have ventured to Arkansas together, and we, uh, we've seen how there's events that are off the grid that people locals don't even know about. So. They're liable to greet you in a Jethro-like manner. Uh, was was the quote I was thinking of when you were talking about that? Uh, that, w that was on a famous trip to a cave, and someone was like, "Well, don't go up, you know. If, if you see a red flag, you can drive up it, but if you see a pink flag." Don't do it because they're liable to greet you in a Jethro-like manner. But <clears throat> the problem with red flags is when they're left out in in the the wild, they they turn into pink flags. So really, there's nowhere to turn for help. Um, yeah, we we were told this on the trip. <laughs> so I I could see it. I could see where like I mean, if I'm gonna be some gorilla out in the wild, <laughs> I'm gonna live in these areas because these people will probably be good to me. They'll probably put feeders out for me, and we'll have this respect because. They know that, you know, um, if I mess with them or whatever, then I'm not going to live here very long because they're not going to make it. But again, that's, that's back to the old myths. I mean, you know, what a step is it from leave milk out for the fae to leave corn pone out for the Bigfoot? I mean, that's, that's just a cultural translation right there. 
a right. few sausage links for Bigfoot. That's right. totally reasonable. Right. right. And you can't tell me that people don't do that now. Like, there's probably a whole... like I What I love about this concept is there's probably more to it that we have never... You know, because everybody that goes to these places, they're just looking for it. And, they'll, you know, they'll show up, you know, with TV crews, whatever, you know, camera crew, and they'll go out and they'll hunt this thing like they would... You know, like if they're on a serious hunt, they never think about, let's talk to the locals and kind of get to know, like, why are y'all putting all this food out in the field? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you were the locals, you'd put it away. I mean, if yeah. someone's coming over to my house, I'm not going to be like, oh, the saucers of milks for the fairies. <laughs> I maintain a nine to five job as a professional. Like, you're going to hide that behavior. That behavior is not on display for the television cameras. So if you are leaving Cornbone for Bigfoot... You're going to put it away when the camera crews come around. Like, by its very nature, you know, the, again, like, the, the lights, the camera, that, that drives the that, story that's away. That's just fun for them to watch because they're like, they're not going to see anything. Mm. Somebody put a gorilla signal on and go out here. <laughs> Get under the bridge. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm loving these stories. Actually, they're, they're really fascinating. And um, I don't know if, you know, I've, I've not had a chance to listen to the others, so I don't know if we're, we're taking a different tangent from them. Um, but I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost. I don't know. I, I, I just find, I guess culturally, I find the idea. I would really, really love to know kind of the cultural background of the people. And I would love to like kind of cross-reference that versus the stories they're telling, and and see if there's this this resonance with the mythologies that they're bringing from the old country um, to the stories that we're we're telling now. Yeah, well, I mean, it's in what I've learned. Like, if you watch, like, you know, when creating a documentary in process, you watch other documentaries. And what I've learned or seen is that a lot of these people in communities. They're big into church. They advertise that a lot in the documentary. They do this, they do that. They're just very family oriented. And then we have this creature that lives in our woods that we gotta, you know. Right, and to them it's like, yeah, it's here. Yeah, it's out there, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that's, that's... See, these conversations are uh, inherently Difficult because I, I don't want people to think that I'm, I'm making any sort of value judgments. No, no, this on, is on this the is people all question. purely. Yeah, this is just us speculating. No, no, absolutely. Um, it's just a caveat I had to put out because you know it it almost feels like um, um, a, a different way of viewing the world. You know, in terms of the known versus the unknown, and and you know when you you think about, I mean, obviously ancient man or mankind as it were ancient mankind is is functionally capacity wise the same as us but we've progressed in science and understanding and things like that and so you can you can really see kind of this idea of like well these are things we know about and we know how to deal with that and then there's just this whole giant question mark over there and you know what i got to keep food on the table so i'm not hunting for the question mark i just know if i leave an offering out bad things don't happen hey it's good enough for me man's got to make a living um, and, and so, again, when you're telling these stories, you're like, these are like super God-fearing, church-going, self-independent people that are also dealing with a cryptid in the backyard that, that comes up. I mean, that's the thing that blew me, when they're like, oh, there's a whole family that comes up in the fields. I'm like, like turkey? <laughs> you know, I mean, I remember seeing turkey come up on, on my dad's lawn, but I can't imagine sitting on the, the porch drinking a cup of coffee, and you're like, oh... Marge, come out. It's fall. The Bigfoot are coming out. Like, that that's just a whole different level for me, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, it, but it really speaks, it, it, and this is what I'm hesitant, it really speaks to that, that older, less scientific mode of, of live and let live, or, or there are just things that we don't need to know about. Right. As opposed to the, the camera crew or the scientific crowd, which you are understandably justifiably with your degrees more a part of that's like let me go look under the bridge <laughs> you know what i mean you know well, and, and it's, it's funny because you said turkey like they there's a seasonal thing where they know they can go 
we're going to hunt the turkey because this is that time of year. Whereas these things, they're like, no, that could destroy our lives and our, our home and our family. We're going to appease that. <laughs> yeah, know, like, but I mean. It's like the, it's like the taboo. Don't but, go shoot at it. Don't go. Hurt. Don't go shoot it. Don't go messing with it. Yeah, you don't, you don't whack hornet's nests with sticks. You don't, you don't do that thing. Uh, did they ever, or, or, or did this woman that rented the house, did she, she ever think to ask them, do you leave anything out for the Bigfoot? Like, how does one deal with it? Or did it just say they just come up in the yard? I, I, you know, I don't know. It's funny because questions come up that are really good and I don't know how to answer because I don't know the logic of these creatures. Like, do they, I mean, is it a, is it a, like a, okay, they're a good family, they're leaving us stuff. We know they're, they're not... You know, well, I'll, I'll, or just, I'll take it are we not step. being disturbed? I'll take it another step. There was one of the first interviews we captured that's going to be in the video was what was really famous in this town was a story about a family that moved in and Bigfoot was taking deer out of their deep freeze, deer meat from when they would hunt, I guess. And they, the landowner was not happy about this of course and shot at them at night apparently knocked one down shot it several times knocked it down and two came out and carried it off but then apparently this family was tormented by them and the person i interviewed said the shooting got so bad the game warden had to come and sit parked on the road at night because they were just shooting all the time at these things and i'm just thinking you know i would move i would stay there i mean you know once i've like screwed up and I set the imbalance in motion. It's only going to get worse. I mean, if this thing is as stealth as they say it is, I'm not going to try to just like, we're going to be fine. I have a shotgun. You know, it, it, clearly that's not working. You know, and this is America, though. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, if you were ever going to find a country where we were going to say, this is my land, goddammit, <laughs> I'm going to fight off this horde of Bigfoots, we are sitting smack dab in the middle of that territory. But you, you were right. I would move. But. You know, that, that's the interesting thing about these stories. You know, you're, you're pulling in game wards, and that's what makes them interesting. I mean, you know, if it's one guy, you could be like, you got the jitters. Yeah. If it's an entire family, yeah. meh. If you're bringing in, you know, federal officials. Law enforcement. Law enforcement <laughs> to help the... stop you shooting from from being menaced by cryptids in the night, That that's a whole different, you know. And, and you want to hear another crazy story? I interviewed a guy there. I don't think he wanted me to and I and I we didn't put the camera on but this guy claims that law enforcement and I'm not gonna say what town I don't want to drive through there and get pulled over but out wow, by Bigfoots well they law enforcement knows that they're out in the woods and they'll actually set up game cams and catch them on game cams and he said you know what they love food wise and I said food wise and he said yeah he goes peanut butter he said they'll set out containers of peanut butter and put up a camera. And he said that these things will actually know how to unscrew it. And he said that peanut butter will be gone and they'll put the lid back on. I, The face you're making right now. <laughs> no. But he was so serious about no, it. No, no, no. He, he's a business owner. He taught, like, classes on stuff. But he told me that, like, like... If you're going to go catfishing, let me tell you the trick when you go catfishing at this fishing hole kind of conversation. I mean, we're adult guys talking about this. And he's like, just bring some peanut butter on a game cam and hook it up. But he said law enforcement does this because they know about them. I'm not discounting it, but no one's, no one's thought to steal the footage just one time? From, from a... Law enforcement, I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> but then again, these, I, I don't, I, again, I'm just hearing it from one individual. I didn't actually talk to a police officer. So. No, I'm not discounting. I'm, I'm wondering if, if that's what our rural police forces are doing for entertainment. It's just like, you know, slow night. Let's tease the monster. <laughs> you want to go get a can of Jiffy from the Piggly Wiggly and see if we can catch a Bigfoot? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I've made this entire podcast no, low brow. No, 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 I'm, I'm having good. a marvelous time. I mean, I, I, we've got a jar of peanut butter now. If we, I didn't have work tomorrow. We could just. Yeah, I, 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 I can't tomorrow because I do work. But we could, you know, when we go to when we make our trek down to do the, you know, the next shoot down there, 
Let's take some peanut butter and stay in the remote cabin absolutely, and get this on film. Absolutely do it. We're yeah. putting the peanut butter out. Yeah, and then, and if we get it. dismembered, we're... Yeah, or if we feel, buy the wrong peanut butter. I didn't ask if it was creamy. They or, like, yeah, creamy, creamy or smooth. <laughs> Choosy Bigfoot's choose Jeff. <laughs> Is it going to get like thrown in the cabin window? <laughs> That's when you bring the organic peanut butter. It just comes right through the window. What is this crap? I don't want this vegan peanut butter. I, I want the sugar. I want all the stuff. Give me the, the high fructose <laughs> corn syrup. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean that I mean that's a that's a whole different experience. I mean there there was there was literally a, a, a thing recently where um there were these keepers of a bee farm mm -hmm. uh, and they were collecting many varieties of honey and a, a bear actually kept breaking in to steal honey and eventually they decided to use the bear as like a crowdsourcing what honey does the bear prefer it and so they they put out multiple kinds of honey and on camera again and again i've seen the footage they're like well he, he likes the clover base like you know literally bears get this particular bear has a taste for the orange blossom so i mean i am i am 110 percent on i don't just think we should bring peanut butter. I think we should bring a variety of peanut butters, and and we can be the first to to, to figure out the diet choosy diet of these. I, I and I find that so comical. Like we've come like we're hearing these stories, but we've come to this detail where they know they like peanut butter. They know they like <laughs> peanut butter. <laughs> How do you you know? It's like when you were talking about mythology, you know. They didn't need a sword. They just needed to take some, like, candy or yeah, chocolate. Or leave a saucer of milk out so they don't turn your baby into a changeling. Um, you know, yeah, clearly yeah. clearly now it's... Sweets affect all. all I sweets. mean, <laughs> look, none of us can argue with the, the delicious, tasty addictiveness of high fructose corn syrup. Um, now we're rotting the teeth and poor health of these creatures, probably. My concern is what happens if the peanut butter supply cuts off. I mean, if you've got them <laughs> addicted to the modern high fructose corn syrup and you just knock that out and take it organic. Law enforcement's going to be getting more calls, probably, in those towns. A lot yeah. more calls, a lot more calls. So was this in Arkansas that this was happening? I believe there... so. It was Arkansas. It was some little town, because I looked it up, and the guy was like, they have it on camera. And he said, they'll go. It's like a park they go to. And this is entertainment. He said, they'll, they know where to go. And they set this peanut butter out. And it, you just watch them eat it like, it, hot it damn, like look it. at him go. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. I love America. America will never bore you. I'm here to tell you. Like, when I first moved back, I was like, this bores me. But you just need to scratch and go a little deeper. Uh, and America is the most phenomenally entertaining place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just um, the, the, the thought, like, you know, it, it's it reminds me of the park where the birds that people have just fed them just whatever for so long, and now they can't even fly because they're so unhealthy. It's that kind of story, you know. Like we're 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 gonna slow these creatures down eventually by poisoning. Them. <laughs> I am so, not. I'm not ready to see an obesity epidemic in the Bigfoot population. It just doesn't run as fast. Like just be panting. The, no, <laughs> he's got like a like a, a very pudgy. <laughs> Baby Bigfoot trying to keep up with his svelte, you know, berries and honey eating dad. And he's just wheezing. Just wheezing. I told you not to eat all that peanut butter. That's uh, that's absolutely amazing. And that's tickled my fancy. Uh, I feel there's a lot of t-shirts we could make out of that. Just like, we don't need to workshop the whole design right now. But I think just like a Bigfoot in a jar of peanut butter, I think, I think yeah. there's some... Absolutely. Some really strong elements. Absolutely. But, I, I mean, I do find it really interesting. I mean, again, to go to go back to that statement, I know personally, I know that, that you have also, you know, when, when you say that you have hunted the paranormal, you know, you've hunted the paranormal. It's not just the cryptids, but it's the spectral and whatnot. I remember riding with you that time you told me the most horrifying ghost story I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were coming back from a cave, and it was some thing about people that had made a Ouija board. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the family of, was tormented. And by the family a, was by tormented. a shadow person, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. lived in the hallway, and, and yeah. you decided to sleep I, with your back to the hallway. I thought I could 
you know, tease it out, but that didn't work. <laughs> it's like it didn't, it was more zeroed in on the family and making their lives miserable. It, like, fed on something. I don't know. This is just, I don't know. But that was the thing, like, I got one of those questions, like, you asked earlier. I don't know what the mindset is on the other side, so I can't tell you, like, what, you know, it's like they figure out a way to just destroy you, you know, in, mentally, you know, and just kind of tear you down. It's what I take from these stories. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean... But then I, I learned early on, like, I don't want to be pissing these things off. I don't want them to come home with me, you know, kind of thing, so... No, I yeah, mean, yeah. the story you told me, it was like a, an old streamlined trailer. I had have just burned it. <laughs> yeah. Like, an old trailer can't be worth that much right. to, like, deal with right. a paranormal thing, but, you know... <sighs> anyway, I... It, it, the, the whole subject is fascinating to me. I... Have you done any research into, like, uh, regional ones? Or are these just anecdotal? Or have you looked at any larger patterns of, of sightings or, or behaviors or anything like that? Well, I mean, there's websites out there, like, I think the big... If you're talking specifically Bigfoot and not goat people or whatever, the BFR, I think it's like the Bigfoot Research Center, they have, like, a website that has all the sightings documented. They actually have a website where all these sightings are documented throughout the U.S. And it's like a map you can see of pinpoint where all these sightings, and you can read about them online. People turn them in. And it's a pretty lengthy, I mean, it's it's very dotted, the map of the U.S. Where So these things are like, you know, they're in every little rural American area. You know, like you, you have these sightings of things. But you hear like, you know, like a whole other episode we could do, I've never been there, and I don't know what to add to it. It's like the whole Mothman thing. But there's people that, like, isn't swear it, that they isn't see it this New country. Jersey, the New Jersey Mothman? I thought it was closer to Ohio, but maybe not. Ohio is certainly more plausible than New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm walking here. I'm a Mothman. Like, okay, yeah. Flying here. I'll say <laughs> hey, I'm flying here. <laughs> Turn your nightlight off, you dick. <laughs> Trying to sleep here. It's like, um, I, yeah. No, 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 absolutely. I mean, I would love to do do more of these if, if you know, I haven't brought it lowbrow. I'm no, definitely yeah. down for the Honoria uh, Bigfoot peanut butter challenge. Yes. I think that is a thing that we needs. We need to do that. I've, I've got a lot more vacation days than I okay. did when I first started uh, these shenanigans with you, and, yeah. and I could we, definitely burn a weekend we for science. This. We need to do this. This would be a fun, a fun journey. <laughs> And, you know, like, I'd get us a place. I'd find a cabin that's out. I'd even ask this guy that I interviewed if he has a place. Maybe we could stay at that house that the... The lady the rented? Lady, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's being rented or if you can just stay there. But, I mean, you never know. I could ask around down there and just that's say, hey. That's a hell of an Airbnb list, then. <laughs> Please leave peanut butter around. Back <laughs> like, I mean, we've extrapolated. They didn't say peanut butter. We've connected the yeah. stories. But, um, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. interesting so what is you know a lot of what we've been talking tonight is is you know with with the less supernatural or i mean we don't know but seemingly natural animals of the environment that we don't know about yet, right as right. opposed to which is why i'm calling them cryptids i don't know if that's well it, the word, it's but. more like what society deems as some type of monster in the woods mm. you know and mm. it's the thing that's out there that that we that's kind of the direction I was going with on this one because I thought it'd be a good one to discuss. Because I mean, you, like I said, you've traveled, you've been around, so you probably have heard some cultures or types of stories like this. So you kind of wonder, you know. But like you said, the America has the best because you know, we 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 tend to we have the story, but then we we um, how do I say this? We kind of bring it like to our little, I don't know, like bring it Jack in the Box or whatever. No, like, no, no, no. Yeah. That's not what I was trying to say. I mean, I. I, I I guess what I'm saying is, um, I mean, one, I was speaking, all right, so it's like this, with, with a movie or a story, right, um, and I've discussed this a lot with friends, one of the, the best things you can do is explain the story enough so that you have the bounds of it, but leave room for your imagination to rush in. I'm sure we've all seen a story, and it's so fleshed out, it's like a whole complete thing, and you're like, you know, like the Lord of the Rings is whole and fleshed out. You don't imagine things around the Lord of the Rings because the Lord of the Rings, that story, the, the arc, the Hobbit to the Lord of the Rings, 
is the story. It's so complete. There's no room for your brain to be like, well, what if something different happened? Like, there's no room. There's no cracks for your imagination to rush in. Um, and a good story leaves room for your imagination to rush in. And so I'm saying that America in its geography, with its open spaces, with its, its um, you know, poly its numerous languages, its numerous people from from you know, a multitude of backgrounds all over the world is really a right breeding ground for imagination to rush in because you have so much geographical area, you have so much areas that are, are still rural, still completely rural. Um, and, and even within those areas, you, you have huge acres and acres and acres of land where you might have one or two people that, that are wandering. And, and so with all these stories and with all this space, it's just really like ripe ground for the most fascinating stories to crop up. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I just find it fascinating. I, I mean, <clears throat> when I lived in Japan, people would tell the stories. And, you know, uh, coming, I guess, from, from a very Western background, a, a very middle, middle of America background, the stories were absolutely bizarre. They'd be like, well, it's terrifying. And I'm like, that story is really weird. Like, I, I got enough. They'd be like, hey, there's a woman, and she wears a surgical mask, and, you know, she takes it down, and her whole face is cut off. Like, her whole mouth is cut open, and if you're like, you're very pretty, she kills you because, you know, you lied to her because she knows she's not pretty because she's disfigured. What? Um, yeah, and, and, and if you say, like, oh, my God, you're ugly, she kills you because you've been rude. So if she, she shows her horribly demon-scarred face, the best thing to do is bow and tell her good evening and, and, and keep walking, and then she won't follow to your house and kill you in your bathroom. And I'm like, I, I got nothing. Like, that's so far out of the cultural context when I first heard that of the kind of story that we would tell here. Now, looking back, it does make a little more sense. And that, you know, you shouldn't be lying and... You shouldn't be needlessly harmful, but one can always be courteous. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the, the mythology stories I've had. There's another one. It's like a. Oh, forgive me. I'm get, we're going to get dogged on the internet for telling these stories wrong. But it's like a, a turtle man that comes out of the water and he's got a depression in the top of his head and it's filled with water, and he'll kill you if he can, but he's very polite. So if you bow to him, he'll bow too, and the water will run out of the, the top of his head. And then I'll have to go back to the lake to refill it with water. And it gives you time to escape. And so a lot of the, the horror stories I remember hearing, now that I look back, at the time I was like, it's totally weird. But now I look back and I'm like, it's really just teaching you to be very freaking polite. Like, yeah. They're, you know, like, they're like moral stories. Yeah, but, yeah. They're, but but it, it's, yeah, it, it's great. I guess for me, I love the fact that these stories still continue. Absolutely. You know, like they, we're, we're, we're putting a today's spin on them perspective you know but like they'll continue forever i mean look you know one day you're gonna have people huddled around the the protein bar generator on an air dome talking about the the vampires of mars i mean i say it and you're like of course the vampires of mars yeah we've all found the suits that were empty of anything but dust yeah i know a guy on, you, like these stories will follow us for as long as there is a humanity sure yeah yeah all right well, that was my, that was the, today's show. I mean, right. you, you, you have anything else you want to add or? Uh, be kind. <laughs> be polite if you be, I mean, well, but hold up. I mean, we're laughing about it, but, but that actually plays back to what we're talking about in America. Where they're like, don't shoot at the Bigfoots, leave out peanut butter for them. You know, I mean, we're getting the, don't mess with them. They're coming up on the yard. If you don't mess with them, they won't mess with you. Right. I guess the, the conclusion of the story is if you see something really weird, be polite to it. Uh, be polite to it. And, um, you know, what are you going to post this on? Oh, it's going to be, well, we're, we're going to do it through, uh, I'm probably just going to do it through YouTube. Like, do it's do gonna be people like get a, to vote? Or do people, can, will people be able vote. to comment? They'll be able to like and comment, yeah. All right, so everybody, post your favorite peanut butter in the comments. We're going to take a vote as to what kinds of peanut butter we need to bring. Um, like, share, sub. Tell us what you think. Do Bigfoots like smooth? Do they like crunchy? Do they like organic? Um, and we will be taking that information when we finally go do the great, the great cryptid uh, peanut butter challenge of North America. <laughs> exactly. What a t-shirt that would be. What a t-shirt, right? <laughs>
I survived the first annual peanut butter tasting of Honoria, Arkansas. It's like a Bigfoot holding a head. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. I, I, I hope I haven't. I know, like, uh, this time of year we want to build out the scary stories. I hope there hasn't been too much humor. I've always always approached life with a certain... Uh, it's it's healthy because somebody who's <laughs> listening to this, they're gonna want, and we had some, you know, some creepy stories in there, and that's the idea, is you put the creepy stories out, but we're just talking about them. We're not like, I'm just telling this like it's a dreadful thing, and then you listen to it, you're like, oh my gosh, now I can sleep with the lights on or whatever. But it's more like a discussion on this happened, this happened. I've talked to these people, so that's kind of what we're doing. I like this. I I would I would like to do this again. I want you to give me okay. another battery. Okay. And I want to do it again when we're not sitting in a well-appointed library. Okay. And we're not comfortable and we're not safe and we don't know the sounds outside okay. the window. I'd yeah. like to see yeah. how these, how some of yes. these stories, yes. you know, slap let's, let's in a do different it. environment. Let's do it. Let's do another one. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm with right. it. I'm right. with it. Thank All you, guys. Right. Yep. Thank you, Adam.